Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm pretty excited to bring you a pretty much year one recap of my wholesale real estate journey. I know I haven't really been too present the past year on YouTube, but that's simply to focus um, on this new business model that uh, I'm pretty much making my full-time job. So there's a lot that I need to catch up on if you guys were curious, simply because the first year is usually one of those where you learn the most and make the most mistakes. And one thing you'll find throughout the video is that is very true. So um, there's a couple different topics. I'm going to kind of be all over the place. I'm going to try to keep as chronological as possible. But with that said, stay with me. Um, there's a lot of things. If you guys are especially trying to get into wholesale real estate, maybe you've closed one, two, three deals. Um, you'll learn a lot from this video simply because of the mistakes I made and that I'm going to go over. So let's get right into it. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you guys enjoy the content. So within 2019, I pretty much consider that my entire year one of wholesale real estate. I started kind of within December of 2018, where I was just kind of getting familiar with the idea. And that's still when I was flipping electronics. Um, if you guys are familiar with this channel, that's what I was talking about. That was my 24 seven full time job. But I started transitioning into real estate because um, I went one of two routes, which was either opening a retail store for, for like a repair shop for cell phones and computers, or I'd go into the route of real estate. And uh, I'm really glad I did because it would have tied me down really heavily. I had to put a lot of money down for that store. And in the long run, whole, uh, real estate in general is probably the best route to go based off of um, just millionaires in general. So getting my foot in the door pretty young at the, at the age of 23 at that time was a really cool experience. Um, so January started where I started doing a couple cold calls. I went driving for dollars, really didn't take it seriously. And up until I'd say, I think it was like around summertime, June, July, or August, I really decided, hey, you know what? I need to put my full-time effort into wholesale real estate and just be doing this every single day. So I went driving for dollars. I'm located in Phoenix, Arizona, so I was tapping, I think it was specifically Tempe. Um, I was driving for dollars in. I didn't really know what to look for, but I had done a lot of research, watched a lot of podcasts, watched a lot of YouTube videos, which I still do to this day, but um, I really just, uh, had to put my full force into it because that's what I, I heard made you successful and get to that first deal as quick as possible because if you're just kind of doing it on the side consistent action is the biggest thing in this game and so I just went driving for dollars pretty much five or six days a week at that time I was only driving getting about 50 properties and to be honest I never even skip traced any I didn't want to put money in it to it because I was scared and so all I did was use fastpeoplesearch.com so if you guys want to do that you can if you're really really tight on money go for it but skip tracing if you're just doing driving for dollars you can only do so much right now I'm currently doing driving for dollars again um, and you'll see the mistakes I made to get to this point but I'm doing driving for dollars and now I'm pretty much paying for um, skip tracing that way I can get the best data because that's credit bureau data you're actually going to be reaching more people where obviously paid data is a lot better than free data so um, in 2019 I started doing that I got my first deal I think in late August September um, and it was out in Tucson Arizona it wasn't really a deal, but it was kind of a deal. If you guys want to uh, kind of uh, learn more about it, check in, check out the podcast I did with the All In team over on All In uh, Wholesaling. You just look that up and you'll see me on one of their podcasts. Um, so I definitely recommend you go watch it because it was a big wake up call for anybody watching, but mainly for myself. Um, especially if you if you think you're doing enough in the real estate business, I can promise you you're not. But over the year, I ended up doing five deals. Um, I have six checks, but basically five deals. So I'm going to go over, I'm not going to go over each and every one. I'm going to make that a separate video of my first five deals, but I'll tell you how much I made. Um, and if you go watch the podcast, I, I couldn't remember what they were. So I just made up numbers. So the first, uh, this isn't in any chronological order, um, but it's $5,100. I had a two grand check. I had a 20, a $12,600 check. I had a $2,500 check. A six thousand and a six thousand seventy five dollar check and I think I had a so the six checks was four hundred and twenty five so that was part of the six seventy five they split up into two checks with so that's basically six checks but five deals 
Um, the first one was in Tucson and the rest were here in Phoenix. And the first three I ended up splitting with uh, a, a friend and buddy of mine now. He's actually a realtor here and he actually really helped me get um, motivated and keep going driving for dollars. It's not something I regret, but my my deal size, average deal size did go pretty low. I think we did the numbers a couple weeks ago. It was right around eight or 8,500, uh, specifically because of that 12 grand check. But that was kind of my average where in this market, it's usually about 15,000, but I'm not upset. Um, it, it's one of those learning experiences. I would never really do JV deals again because that just shows because it's just a kind of a sign of laziness and you don't really know what you're doing. But as a beginner, you can kind of see why I had done that. So I partnered the first three deals with him. He did bring a lot to it, except one deal was kind of one of those where I found everything, but he was just part of a team with me. So I had to split it. But the first two, he brought the buyers. And so that was a, a really cool experience because I started to see something was tangible. Um, and so my last deal was closed November uh, middle early or middle of November and that was actually the biggest check of twenty six hundred dollars um, and that one was out in Peoria Arizona so I closed all of them uh, the last two again were by myself and so it became really tangible but they weren't weren't consistent I mean they were over a few month period but uh, it was one of those things where they were all kind of from different sources. I mean, the first three were driving for dollars and then the fourth one was from a Facebook, free Facebook ad I put out, got really lucky. And the fifth one, my biggest deal surprisingly, was from a Craigslist ad um, that I put out. And again, I got super lucky um, because <laughs> to be honest, from hearing other people, you don't get deals from Craigslist here. But I had pretty much put up 10, 20 ads every single day for like five months. So I guess you can say it kind of paid off. But the guy hit me up, literally went there and um, signed it with, I think the next day or the day after, and we had a deal. And so it was really cool, um, ended up being a rental, but um, enough, I'm not gonna talk about too much of the deals I said I'd talk about in the, in the other video, but I figured I'd go over a couple of the failures I made over the past year, just so you guys can learn, because this is where you're really gonna get um, kind of experience that's not yours, but you can apply so you don't make those same mistakes. One was, what I talked about before was JVing deals. It's great for maybe your first or second, but don't rely on it. There's enough buyers out there. If you have a deal, it's gonna sell. Just put it up on Facebook Marketplace or put it up on Craigslist. You're gonna get a deal. I actually saw one of my deals through a connection of a buddy of mine and that's where I made that $12,600. And so there's a plenty of ways, if, if, it's a, if there's money, if there's equity in the property, enough equity, you're gonna have a deal. Otherwise, if you have to go to the point where you think you need to JV a deal, I'd go back and look at your numbers first. Sometimes they do have unique buyers, but if you couldn't reach them by just putting it out on Facebook groups or Facebook marketplace, you're not gonna have a deal. So that was a kind of a, it's a big failure for me, but I'm not gonna consider it a failure, but you guys consider it, could consider it one simply because I lost a lot of money. I think I, I mean, the first three checks, I probably lost an extra 15, $20,000 simply because I, uh, it was probably more like 10 to 15,000 that could be mine. And um, I wouldn't be in such of a tight situation right now, which I'm getting to. Um, so that was a big failure. Marketing, another one, I've talked about this in the other video, was I was too much all over the place. I went driving for dollars. And this is a big thing I learned when I talked to the All In team over that podcast was, I was too all over the place. I didn't focus my time. I should have kept driving for dollars and saved up more money. But as soon as I got those first checks and a lot of people, they'll get ten, fifteen thousand dollars checks. Well, well, they weren't really that big. I mean, I think it was overall like twelve or thirteen thousand dollars between them, maybe even less. And so I decided, you know what? I'm just going to reinvest. I still had money from electronics, so I could live. But I didn't think of how money management really came into play. So I started investing it into a cold car, which I had a really bad experience was with. I like to say it's not really my fault because I know that data was good. It was just a really corrupt company I used which was led by a lot of great people. And if you guys wanna know it, it's lead gen pros. I don't care about reputations, but I had a really bad experience. I think it's owned by a couple of the bigger guys that talk about their industry and their numbers. But you guys can do your research. I just had a bad experience. I'm not gonna say you did, but um, got very few leads, spent a couple thousand dollars on it. And then I tried Facebook ads, which um, I ended up doing myself, I actually paid a company for the first month, which ran me $3,500 with the ad spend, which was a lot. 
but I wanted to learn how to do it because I figured maybe it's easier that I don't have to go cold call every single day. I just will get leads organically. Um, and I realized one, you have to put more money into it, especially within the Phoenix market. And two, it was just a stupid expense. I did get about 50 leads from it and I'm actually probably gonna be closing one of them here. That was just a follow-up game for the last couple months. Um, out in, I think it's actually a deal out in Texas, which I'm really excited about near Houston. For fingers crossed, I actually get it under contract, but that, that could be easily my biggest deal, over 20 to 20, 20 to $30,000 profit. So I'm really hoping that goes through, but um, it really didn't pay off in the short run and needed to be a much longer run thing. And I only really did it for like two months. So that really screwed me, but I put uh, like probably like five or six grand into it. And you guys can see my total net was like 28,500 for the whole, my whole time so far wholesaling. And I pretty much did everything back in it. And so too quickly I did, I should have saved up more money. So that was a huge mistake I made. And now you can, you can consider a scaling mistake. It's one of those things where you look back and I'll probably laugh at it in a few years, but I'm, I'm more than fine making these mistakes. It's just, I have to, I have to live with it. And um, now I'm in a little bit of a stickier situation. But if you guys are, are in this and are still with me, um, a couple things I, I guess I could go on and recommend to you guys is one, attend meetups. Depends on where you're located. Some markets are better, but obviously I live in like the guru capital of uh, wholesale real estate, Phoenix, Arizona. So there's a lot Lot of meetups the best one if you're in this town would be the real estate disruptors one in my opinion uh, i go every single first thursday of every single month it's in tempe arizona and there i actually met one of my cash buyers uh, i brought my partner along so we be, we actually met a lot of people and um, one of the deals that i had had another company disposition which means they sold it to one of their cash buyers that's how i actually lost uh, a big part of one of my deals as well but um I actually met the guy that was actually the rep that I was in contact with the whole time that put me in touch with a really good buyer. Obviously they took a cut, which sucked, but I met a lot of good relationships and I'm not a huge like extrovert. I'm a pretty introvert kind of person. So I didn't talk to too many people when I go or I still don't talk to too many people. I go to more learn and watch the speakers. But um, if you're that kind of person that wants to get out of your comfort zone, you can meet a lot of cool people. And I know a lot of people end up meeting their long-term partners there. For me, I don't really have a partner yet. Um, I don't know if I'll ever get one, but you start to see a pattern of a lot of the real big guys have a partner or two. So something I'm thinking about, but just haven't found the right person. Um, and I won't ever add a partner on if unless I ever find that right person. I hope that kind of makes sense. So meetups were a really cool thing. Finding a good title company is really good. I went through two different title, three different title companies before I found a really good one. Here in Phoenix, if you guys want a recommendation, I just use Magnus title. Um, it's a lot of, it's one that's actually, I think it's owned by one of the real estate gurus here, but um, they're actually really good. I deal with one lady there. They give me my pre foreclosure list um, because in a sense, Essentially, they are a pretty much an arm of your business. When you put a deal in contract, they're the ones that are communicating with your um, actual sellers that whole time. I never really talk to the sellers unless I need to get certain information from them that my title lady can't, but they're kind of like a, they represent your business. If they have good attitude during that transaction period, that's gonna reflect good on your company and you're probably gonna get a good review. But if you were really good and let's say you had a bad title rep or bad title company, that could look really bad on you. And one, that'll give you a bad reputation, but two, that could pop possibly affect your deal not going through. So good finding a good title company, I would just look for recommendations and Facebook groups in your area, depending on where you are. But that, that it was a huge part uh, or addition to my business that kind of helped me close deals. And the last piece of advice I could give you that is from my experience is find a couple softwares that work for you. One, always get MLS access, access. So find a good realtor that you become buddies with. Um, that's who I did my first three deals with and he actually did a lot of the company in the beginning But now I have pretty much permanent access to the MLS and he still helps me with the comping But now I'm really good at it on a couple softwares I'd recommend you guys would be prop stream which I do use for comps if you don't have MLS access It's really good for just looking up pretty much any information on the homeowner you need all around the country's prop stream the MLS I'm trying to think list source if you're looking to buy data if you if you want to buy 
any piece of data or leads, reach out to me. I can get you three cent leads in any market within the country. So that's just a little plug for you guys. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else. If you guys want to go driving for dollars, I'll probably make a separate video on it. Use Deal Machine. It's, it is only like 50 bucks a month. If you can't afford it, I mean, you probably shouldn't be in this industry anyway because you'd be scared to actually invest anything. So I'm probably gonna wrap up the video here. Uh, it's a little bit of a ramble as I told you guys, but I want it to be as authentic, as raw as I possibly can, just me talking to you guys behind the camera. Uh, this was pretty much my first take doing this, so it, it did come from my personal experiences from the heart. And I want you guys to know, I mean, I'm in a tight situation. Uh, you, I, you guys can see where it kind of led, where now I'm back driving for dollars. I know exactly what to do. But again, I do recommend you go checking out that podcast and I'll link it down below. Um, I think it's like a little bit over an hour long, but it's one of their, their longest and most viewed podcasts on the entire channel. I did get roasted in it. I mean, hold me accountable, it sucked, but it was a big wake up call for me. I'm, I was doing about 10% of the things I actually needed to do. Now I have two big whiteboards. I'm building a whole door knocking team. I've got almost appointments every single day now. Um, as well as I'm still driving for dollars, I'm always marketing in this business because if you're not marketing, you're gonna not get deals. That's the only way. That's the biggest thing, biggest piece of advice I could give you guys is never stop marketing. And that's a lot of one of the things people get into when they're getting in this industry, they'll close a few deals. Deals, um, and then they get so focused on dispositions and like making money that they're not actually marketing anymore because they don't have a team around them and if you do or do not have a team around you, you still need to be marketing whether that's PPC, direct mail, dr uh, driving for dollars, um, Facebook advertising, it doesn't matter. Stick to one thing. I know I'm still talking, I apologize, but if you guys did like uh, the video, please hit that thumbs up button. Share the video if you find anybody um, close to you that might find this useful or thinking about it, you're trying to become a partner with. Show them this, I guarantee it'll be one of those things where it's a big wake up call. See that not everything's so so diamonds and rubies. It's, it's struggling, but it's gonna happen. Everybody has their different stories, so I appreciate you guys being here. It means a lot to me, a lot more videos. My goal this year is 50,000 subs. I'm not on track to do that, but I'm gonna make sure that I am. Um, and with that said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.